All right, Matthew, so this isn't the exact same question set as you asked about, but I felt like it might actually be more beneficial. Sorry, I just fixed my headset there. It might be more beneficial for you if I did problems that are like the ones that you're going to do, but not exactly, because then you can practice the ones on your own, and then you can ask if they're right or whatever you want to do. But I just thought doing it a little bit practice-wise is a good idea. Anyway, the question says write the slope-intercept form of the equation uh, of the line through the given point with the given slope. Now, slope-intercept form, of course, is the old y equals mx plus b thing that you've probably seen before, in this class at least. Um, so it has four components. It's got the x, which is your values that you input. It's got your y, which is your output. It's got your m, which is your slope, so it tells you how it goes up or down, and then your intercept. All components that are there. Now, this question, we're going to start out with slope-intercept and then just kind of use the information that we're given to work it up. So um, I'm given an x, I'm given a y, and I'm given a slope. So really, the only thing I'm missing is uh, my intercept right here. So I'm going to make a sort of generic form of the equation over here on the left a little bit. Then I'm going to plug in, if you have enough of the information, you can just start plugging in stuff. So the x here is th uh, 3, so where x was. These two are touching, so I'm going to say that's multiply. My m value that I've been given is negative 1. I need to find my b, that's what I'm looking for, but my y value is negative 1 as well. Then I'm just going to solve it. It's like solving a two-step equation, even though one of the steps is just combining like terms, or multiplying in this case. So negative 1 times 3 is, of course, negative 3. Um, get b by itself, that's the whole point of it. b is equal to positive 2. So now I know that uh, I have a equation that I can work with. I have all the parts that I need. So I'm going to tell the story of y and x, but I don't need to, again, use the 3 and the 1, negative 1 anymore, because when I did it before, it sort of told me one piece of information or one input-output. But I want to make an equation so I can put in any x that I want and find the y that goes with it. Um, but I just use the b value that I just figured out, so plus b. And of course, I want to use the slope that they gave me, because why wouldn't you use something that someone gives you? So you'll see it look like this. You may even see, I don't know why I put b here. I meant to put 2. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. Um, so negative x plus 2. So kind of write the formula down, that way you can see it and know what you have already, and then work your way to the point that you have all the parts that you need, and those types of problems actually become pretty easy. Uh, they seem like they're pretty difficult, and the weird thing is, um, you can see it's A um, in this one, to yours it won't be A, but uh, the weird thing about this concept is it's in Algebra 1, it's in Algebra 2, it's in Geometry, at least in some sections of most textbooks. But a lot of times the state doesn't really assess these types of questions, but I have a feeling they're going to soon, so I might as well uh, go through with it. Now, uh, write slope-intercept form again. I'm going to sort of change over to this aqua-ish color, if it'll let me do that. y equals mx plus b. Now, I have a couple x and y's over here, so that might be useful. Um, but I don't have an m value that I already know offhand, so I'm looking for this. Color's not that much different. Or um, I also need a b value. So what I'm going to do to find each of these things, uh, the m stuff I'm going to, or my slope anyway, I'm going to use the slope formula. So that would be this whole thing. There's a formulas page I've given out before. It's pretty important. I might put a link to it on the front page. Anyway, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. These numbers just represent uh, their order, really. They're just labels. They don't mean anything mathematically. If you see the number on the bottom, that's called subscript. It doesn't mean anything specific. So anyway, y sub 2 here would be negative 5 minus y sub 1, which is 2. And by the way, if this happened to be a negative number right here, you would do minus negative 2, just FYI x of 2, I'm going to do negative 3, minus x of 1, which is 0. I end up getting negative 7 over negative 3, which is 7 
thirds. So there's my m value. I'm halfway there. I have the m that I need. Now I need to find my b value. I'm going to change colors for this. And we're going to do it the same way we did on the last problem. My m value is 7 thirds. And the cool thing about this one is you can pick any, uh, either one of the two uh, points that you want. You can choose the negative 3 and negative 5, or you can choose the 0 and the 2. I'm going to choose the 0 and the 2 because it's way easier, but that's just me, because it's got the 0. And my y value of 2. Now, 7 thirds times 0 is 0. And obviously, I didn't really need to write this step. I just wanted to have a visual representation for you. Uh, the 0 goes away, so b is equal to 2. Now I have my m and I have my b, so I can go back into my original equation that I wrote down and just plug in stuff that I need. y equals a 7 thirds slope plus 2. And that one is c. So I'm going to guess that it's c. We can test. I'm going to test to see if I'm right, because occasionally I'll do these and be wrong, and I've been wrong a couple times today because I'm just tired or something. So there it is. It worked. Let's look at the next one. Um, same type of thing here, but I'll just go through, you know, the methodology, you know, one more time. Why not? Y equals MX plus B, and I'm going to do the B in purple this time, and I'll do the this blue for my M. Uh, same thing here, I need to find slope and intercept. So to do slope, the more you write down on these, generally the better it goes. A negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. Negative 4 minus 0 is negative 4 and I end up with a slope of 2. Now I'm ready for my b value. My slope goes here. I'm going to pick this one again. I mean, it totally works. I'll just do this one because I don't think there's another one like this. So I'll just to show you that it does work. So negative 4 goes here. You cannot mix and match, though. You can't pick the x from one and the y from the other. Otherwise, it takes away the integrity of the process. Not like emotional integrity. I mean, like it literally stops working. It doesn't work anymore. So negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Plus 8. So my B's final value is positive 3. So now that I have everything that I need, I can go back into the old equation. Y equals 2x plus 3. If it was negative 3, I'd put minus 3, just in case that wasn't obvious. Uh, so the answer that I get for this one is B. And we'll see if that's right. Yep. We're doing this in my regular classroom, too. Now, um, parallel and perpendicular. So I think the next one says parallel also. So what I'm going to do is the one that says parallel and one that says perp, which is perpendicular. In order to do these, um, it's actually... They're almost easier than the last ones we... They are easier than the last ones we did, if you can remember a couple things. First off, you want this th to be parallel. I should also mention that this requests it in slope-intercept form. If it requests it in standard form, and that may be what the ones at the end did, I didn't look, honestly, you would do it the exact same way, except when you finally got your y equals mx plus b that you wrote at the very end of the last section, you would convert that to standard form by getting x and y on the same side and eliminating any... Um, fractions, that kind of stuff. But it is what it is. Now, in this case, I have to think about what parallel lines look like. If I have two lines that never intersect, and these are badly drawn, so you're going to have to pretend like they have, they're have they never going to intersect, um, even though it looks like eventually they'll hit each other down here. Let's just put that out of your head. It, um, the idea is they never intersect, which means they have to go up and over by the same amount every time. So the idea of parallel is that they have the same slope. That's the worst slope written I've done in a very long time. I should go back to this. I'm good at this aesthetic. So same slope. That's important. 
Uh, if it's perpendicular, we'll talk about that in a minute. But anytime you see through a line and parallel to, the nice thing for you is that you can just go ahead and circle whatever the slope is. Negative 5 over 4. So to get my answer, I'm going to start out with my equation, of course. And you'll notice that I have some X, an X that I can use. I have a Y I can use. They're right here. I have an M that I can use now because I know it's the same one, so negative 5 fourths is the slope. I don't have a B that I can use. That minus 5 is the original line. If you have a line that's parallel to that line and uh, has the same slope and the same intercept, it's not a different line. It's the same line. You're just rewriting it, so that would be pointless. So what we're going to do is look for B. So I'm going to take my x value of 4, my slope value of negative 5 fourths, and my y value of negative 1. And we're going to go fishing for b's, even though I don't think you fish for b's. It's kind of irrelevant. Negative 5 fourths times 4 is negative 5. I know this because I, know, I remember that 4 over 1 is the fraction, and then the 4's, 1's on top, 1's on the bottom, so they cancel. I'm not making up any sort of brilliant move there. It's just that it saves you time. So I end up with minus 5. B is equal to 4. Now all I have to do is go back in to my original setup one more time. Y is equal to, I want the same slope, so negative 5 over 4. X and then the B value down here is positive 4, so plus 4. So I'm going to say that the answer is B. In fact, you could have done that entire problem just by saying, oh, it's parallel, they have the same slope, because it's the only one that in front of its x has a negative 5 fourths. Save yourself a bunch of time there. You've just been like, oh, it's b. There's another parallel one, use the same slope. Now, on the other side of it, um, 23, I know you asked about 22, but this is pretty much the same thing. Um, it's perpendicular, that's what p-e-r-p -E means, right here. Now, what, uh, when I'm dealing with perpendicular lines, I'm dealing with lines that intersect, which means they cross each other, obviously, and they cross each other in such a way that it actually makes a 90 degree angle. Uh, a 90 degree angle, also referred to as a right angle, and not because it's like right versus left, but because of upright, like the floor of your house and the wall should probably have a 90 degree angle between them or very close to it because it makes it stable when you try to put the walls up, especially in like um, early architectural com early architectural days when they didn't have you know concrete blocks and whatnot. But you want to have pretty close to 90 degrees unless it's some other architectural trick, but making a very generic building, uh, you know that it's safe because it's upright. That's why it's called a 90 degree angle. In order to have that happen, you have to have a slope that is nowhere near the same. In fact, the slope will be as messed up as it could possibly be without multiplying it by a number or something. In a way, you could sort of multiply it by negative 1, but it's visually as dissimilar as possible but has the same numbers involved. So you're going to end up creating what's called a uh, uh, opposite reciprocal. Opposite means you change the sign. So what once was negative one-third now becomes one-third. Reciprocal means that you're going to flip the fraction. So what was once one-third is now three over one, which is just three. Uh, the reality is if you have an original slope of 4, you're going to flip it over, but you don't see that there's a 1 under there, but there is, because 4 divided by 1 is 4. Uh, so it becomes 1 over 4, and then you want to change the sign. So perpendicular, if you see that, you want to flip it and switch it. Now, the math that I did, so my new slope, my m value, we figured out, was 3. Now that I have that, it works exactly the same way as the ones we were doing before. y equals mx plus b. Um, my slope, of course, is 3. My x value is negative 1. My y value is 2. I'm getting these from the point, by the way, in case that wasn't clear. And I need to find my b value still. 
I don't have it. I don't want to use minus 5 because it would be the same line, pretty much. Negative 3, or 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. I was trying to say the answer before the question. Uh, I'm trying to get b by itself, so I add 3 to both sides. b equals 5. So now that I have this part and I have this part, I can make my final answer. So y equals mx plus b becomes y equals 3x plus 5, which means uh, if I want to make a graph or I want to find a point on the graph, all I have to do is take whatever x value I want. So say I want to know where it is at uh, positive 2 right here. What I would do to get that matching y value is do 3 times negative 2 or positive 2 plus 5. So it would be 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 5 more, which is 11. So on this graph at uh, 2, it's all the way up at 11. And at 0, I would do 3 times 0 uh, plus 5. So it actually hits right here. So the graph sort of looks like this. But the part that you need right here, y equals 3x plus 5. So the answer, I think, in my head is d. And I'm right. So uh, the last section, I think you asked about 38 and 39. So let me skip over to 38. This is uh, just graphing inequalities. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. Or, yeah, zoom out. There's a, it's telling a visual story. This is the story. When I draw a graph, what I'm doing is telling a story about where y's exist when I have specific x values. In this case, specifically, I'm not just saying that y values are, you have a one-to-one -one match. I'm saying anything past a certain number works. So uh, you should start by looking at whether there is a line underneath your less than, greater than sign. If you have this, it means that your answer is going to be a solid line. If you have this, it means it's going to be dotted. The reason, uh, say I wanted to know where it would be at um, x equals 0. So I want to go on the graph here, and I want to know where is the y value if I lock the x in so it doesn't move anywhere over through here. So all I need to do is plug in an x value of 0. Well, this times this is 0, so I end up with y is less than or equal to 1. So I can say that right at 1, that's where my dot is. However, the y value doesn't just include that 1, it also includes every number underneath 1, so less than 1, because it says y is less than or equal to. So it also would be here, and 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 here, on and on and on. If that goes on with every dot, then it really means I can just start shading to get my answer. That's kind of the story that we're trying to tell. If there is a, uh, if there's no greater than equal to sign, like it just says this, that means it's every number less than one. So instead of saying that I make a dot that's hard and fast right there, I'm going to do something where, kind of like when we did inequalities, we sort of made a circle and then we'd shade down. But to do that in a larger sense, it's easier just to make a uh, you know, if we needed to, we'd make a dotted line going up, and then we'd shade down. That's the first part of the story that needs to be told. So in this case, they're all uh, solid lines, and the answers are all solid lines too, so that works. Uh, from here, I'm going to go about thinking, okay, well, I have negative 6 fifths x plus 1. And I know this form, this tells me the slope, and this tells me the intercept. This is where I cross that y-axis. So in, my, in this case, it's at plus 1. It says so right here, plus 1. So I'm going to go on the graph and just make dots at all the plus 1s. Well, only one of the graphs really crosses at that point, which is right here. So I can guess, just based on that information, that it's probably C. I also get further backing, because when I go to look for my m value, of negative 6 over 5, I know it's negative, which means it goes down left to right. So this one has to be out, because it's going up left to right. This one's going down, this one's going down, this one's going down. I know specifically 
that it's going negative 6 down, as it moves left to right anyway, and it's going 5 to the right. Or, I mean, theoretically, it could go 6 up and 5 left, but and it's the same thing. So what I do occasionally is I'll pick a couple points that cross right on those lines. So maybe right here and right here looks pretty good. You, you want to get ones on the edges of the boxes if at all possible. That kind of stuff. So I can get a little bit of a slope going on where I can just do some counting and it kind of gets me to where I want to be. I don't need to bother with that right now. What I'm going to deal with is looking at shading. So I know it's going to be something in this range where it crosses at plus one. I know it's going to go down six and over five, so it's, you know, something like this. I know it's a solid line going down, and then I need to read the story of what Y is doing. Y is the only thing that matters here. Y is next to the little end, so it says Y is less. Well, if the shading on the graph tells me what Y is, I need to mark anything less than each one of these points, so it goes down. Because the Y axis goes down, it's like negative one, negative two, that kind of thing. So I'm looking for something like this. D is out because it's going up from each point. B is out because it's going up from each point. So I'm pretty sure that my initial idea that it's C is correct. And it is. And if I can get the calculator to come up, yay, there's the emulator. I can go in, turn it on, clear it out. I was doing some matrices work earlier. I can actually graph this. I go to the y axis, uh, the y equals sign, and I just type in negative 6 over 5, and there's my x value for the graph, plus 1 and I want it to shade. The, the only problem with this calculator is it won't tell you without using an, uh, a program on it, which we're not allowed to do for the end of course test, um, whether it's dotted or solid. You'll just have to do that on your own. So it's less than, the Y is less than, so I just hit enter about three times and you'll notice it has a little on the bottom of, if you had sort of a rectangle right here. Let's see if I can do it without losing the graph. So if I have a bit of a rectangle right here, this is the bottom half of the rectangle. So it's telling me the line, the shade is down, the shade is down, that sort of stuff. Um, so I hit, in, I hit graph and there it is. It crosses just above the origin here, it goes down, it's shaded down, so C is the perfect answer for this one. Um, one more, I think you said 39, so this is the same type of thing. Um, hopefully it's the same type of thing. In this case, I'm looking at a little bit of a different scenario, but not much different. I mean, really. The, the, biggest, the first thing we should look at is uh, the inequality, of course. It is just a less than. So the y values are actually less than um, the line. So that means I don't have the exact number. So basically, it's a dotted line. So c can't be the answer. Because c says, hey, going up. And solid line, and none of that, you know, some of that plays and some of it doesn't. But the dotted line, solid line thing is the cell on this side of it. If I expanded this one out a little bit, there's nothing here. That would be plus zero. So I know it hits the origin because that's my B value right there. So it's got to touch this dot. All three of these do, so that's out. That's not helpful as much as it could have been. Um, the next set would be I could look at the slope. It's positive, so any slope that's negative that's going down left to right is, not, is out, so D is out. So basically I'm dealing with A and B, and the only difference between A and B here is where they're shaded. The story being told is Y is less than, because Y is next to the little end, so I want to shade down. This is the only one that's shading down. So. There it is. Um, I hope these match. I should mention one other type of problem that you might see on occasion. If you see a y is less than or greater than or whatever it happens to be, a number, so y is greater than 7. This means uh, that you're going to have an, a line that's a straight line. It either goes straight up and down or it goes uh, across. If it's y, what it looks like is you want to go on the y-axis up to 7 and you want to make a dot, and then the line will be a dotted line that goes straight across. You never draw a line where it says Y or X in the same direction as the axis that it's on. It's dotted because it's uh, greater than, and since it's greater than, I want to shade up. If you see an X version of this, X is less than negative 3, 
I do the same thing except I do it on the x-axis and the line is up and down. X is less than. X's get smaller going this way because the X's go up going this way, so I shade down. That's it. Uh, hopefully this is helpful.